ASIP videos. Now refresh. It's, uh, weirdly enough. Ah, oh, wait, but it will, it will still end up submitting the form in the end, I think. Um, whoops, I just realized I don't have a return true. Okay. Uh, ignore this bit, we'll come on to it later. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so if we refresh... Okay, it still says that, but I still think it submits the form. I did have this problem before. Uh, just that return false is crucial, just so you know. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, and if that's true, if that's, uh, sorry, false, then obviously they have filled in the first name. So we'll go on to the else if, um, and check if the last name, again, using get element by ID, the length of that is equal to zero. If it is, it says, again, input a last name, return false. So if, if I refresh this, put in something random. Uh, okay, so you can see it hasn't said input a first name because the um, uh, the first name text box is, uh, has some characters in it, so it says input a last name. Okay, if that's uh, false, uh, then it moves on to the next thing, and it says document .get element by the siblings. So now it's getting the uh, um, it's checking the radio buttons dot checked equals false. Okay, and um, the reason this works is because both our radio buttons, if we just go down, you can see they have the same name. They're both siblings. So when we uh, refer to that, when we uh, get their element by ID, we're actually looking at both of them. So this uh, stops us from having to check if one is false and the other is false. Okay, this just says if both uh, checked is equal to false. Okay, and that dot checked is just checking if they're pressed or not. Uh, so let's fill in the last name here and click submit so you can see none of them are checked you must say whether or not yet you must say whether you have siblings or not okay uh, of course we've alerted that and return false again okay so now just select that okay moving on um, now we're checking the uh, the select box what and what we're checking is if the uh, the value inside uh, the element id as age is equal to none. And if we scroll down again, this is where I said I'd explain something, uh, we can see this value none is equal to please select an age group. And that means the user hasn't bothered to select an age group if uh, the value inside the element id as age is equal to none. So it alerts you must select an age group. Uh, whoops, wrong button. You must select an age group. Uh, I don't know why that's saying that. That's just um, the browser. That's uh, what's it called? Google Chrome. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, and finally, what I've decided to do with my um, form is have an age limit. So uh, I'm again going to check that uh, the select the list box. But this time I'm checking if the value is either 7 to 11. You can see the value of the 7 to 11 option is 7 to 11 with a text TO. Or, that's what this uh, double thingy means. It, it's um, right by the Z. You hold shift and then you press the thing right by the Z. And you've got to put two of those, just so you know. One won't suffice. Um, anyway, and as well as checking 7 to 11, it's also checking 12 to 16. So now I'm going to fill in my age group as 7 to 11, submit. That age group is too young. Oh yeah, of course, um, it says that age group is too young and returns false. So 7 to 11 is too young. Let's test this. That age group is too young. And if I change it to uh, 7 to 21, you can see it's not checking anything else. And if it passes through all of these, it's going to return true. That's just why I was filling that at the end. Because if we didn't have... Uh, any statement that said return true, I'm not sure if it will work. Uh, anyway, if I submit, you can see everything goes back to usual, and also, um, I think I talked about this in my forms, uh, HTML forms video, but remember there's a get and post methods in a form, and just to prove that the form has in fact submitted, you can see it's outputted all this via the get method. 
okay and the get method means through the URL bar okay um, now finally this uh, button the reason I just ha added this random button is because as well as uh, this tutorial is to uh, help you understand the get element by ID function it's also about um, events okay and so I've just got this random button here. I think I did this in my functions uh, tutorial anyway. I showed you a similar thing. Uh, type equals button value is click me. Uh, that's just the text that shows up on the button. And the on click event is play funk. And if we look at the function play funk, it says do stuff. And this was just to demonstrate uh, the calling of functions inside another function. And we can see inside function do stuff, we have alert box. So if I press this, it alerts the text box. Okay, so um, I think this was a pretty short tutorial. Oh, okay, pretty long then. Uh, pretty long tutorial. I'm gonna stop it now because I don't want to overrun 20 minutes. That's so that's just two parts. Uh, anyways, uh, over and out.